So in the world of diabetes, a lot of people are using stevia to sweeten their food because A, it comes from a plant and B, it contains zero calories. So right. how do you feel about stevia? So, you know, I, actually, Robbie, stevia is interesting. So traditionally, my response about what we might call artificial sweeteners or, or sugar substitutes is um, I recommend against them. I, I reckon, so, you know, talking about aspartame, NutraSweet, um, sucralose, saccharin, I've been opposed, and I've been opposed because they're intensely sweet. And, and it's interesting, in the vernacular, we don't say a sugar tooth, we say a sweet tooth. So people who like the taste of sweet, what they like is the taste of sweet. And it doesn't really matter where it comes from. So if you crave sweet, and you drink, say, diet soda that's artificially sweetened, you are feeding that sweet tooth, and you're not making the craving for intensely sweet stuff go away, you're actually cultivating it. Well, what, what's gonna happen? Well, it's true, your soda didn't have sugar or calories, but you crave sweet all the time. So when it's time for dessert, you're gonna want more than most people. And when it's time for pasta sauce, you may prefer the one with added sugar, even if you don't know it's there, and on and on it goes. We really don't have any convincing evidence that artificial sweeteners help people lose weight, or even necessarily help them reduce the total amount of sugar in their diets because a sweet tooth is being cultivated. And that sugar that you cut out of the artificially sweetened food tends to find its way back into your diet somewhere else because you prefer sweeter food overall. So in general, I've been opposed. And, and my advice has been, rather than replacing sugar with artificial sweeteners, just eat better food buy pasta sauce without added sugar. You know, the, the amazing thing, and I, I've done a lot of work on even scoring the nutritional quality of individual foods over the course of my career. So I've had this intimate window to the range of nutritional quality in specific food categories like pasta sauces and yogurts and salad dressings and crackers and chips. And there's an incredible range of nutritional quality in all of those different categories. And the worst of those foods almost always have added sugar in a long ingredient list. The best of those foods have a short ingredient list and no added sugar where it doesn't belong. So I, I call all of that stealth sugar. And what I've told patients for 25 years is, you know, learn how to look at food labels, cut out the stealth sugar. You'll be taking gram after gram after gram of sugar out of your daily diet, not needing artificial sweeteners to replace it because it's sugar that didn't belong there in the first place. You'll be avoiding that sugar. You'll be avoiding those calories and you'll be rehabilitating your taste buds. So I also call this taste bud rehab. The less sugar you get, the less you need. You're now filing down that sweet tooth. So actually when it's time to drink something or it's time for dessert, you actually don't want anything so intensely sweet. That's my preferred approach. I, I have no artificial sweeteners in my diet and I have no stevia either. However, your question was specifically about stevia. And, and I would say that the preliminary studies of stevia so far look fairly promising. It is a plant extract. It's less intensely sweet than the artificial sweetener. So, you know, uh, aspartame, I think, is 600 times as sweet as sugar. Saccharin is 1,300 times as sweet as sugar. Stevia is more proximal to sugar in the intensity of its sweetness. And it may actually have some metabolic benefits associated with it. some blood sugar stabilizing effects may actually have a, a slightly insulin sparing effect, which would be good. And, and by the way, the same appears to be true for monk fruit extract, which is the other natural sugar substitute with no calories that's catching on these days. So I'm not totally opposed to stevia and monk fruit extract. I find them interesting, but I don't think they're the best way to cut sugar out of the diet. I, I don't have any of either in my diet because when I'm thirsty, I mostly drink water. I'm eating real food all the time. Uh, nothing really uh, needs to be artificially sweetened. And there is room in my diet for a little bit of real sugar. You know, occasionally I have a dessert. Um, it's the best version of, a, of dessert possible. Usually it's something my wife makes. And generally it's made with about a quarter of the sugar the recipe calls for because, you know, our taste buds are very sensitive to sugar. We don't need very much to be satisfied. And I think everybody can go there. I think that's the best approach. But again, I'm not as opposed to stevia as I have been to the artificial sweeteners we've relied on in the past. So going back to what you were saying earlier, would you agree that if somebody decided that they wanted to put stevia inside of their food and they're using it on a somewhat liberal or somewhat frequent basis, uh, that it's actually going to disguise, sorry, that it's going to trick their taste buds into preferring an intensely sweet flavor such that it's going to be harder for them to really uh, appreciate natural food? 
So Cyrus, I, I'm a, a scientist. You know, my my day job for 20 years now has been running a, a clinical lab in addition to seeing patients. Uh, so I, you know, I prefer to make a clear distinction between what I know and what I think. This is what I think. The science here really is quite limited. We we don't have very clear studies showing that specific artificial sweeteners, stevia, um, you know, natural alternatives to sugar, calorie-free sweeteners, that they cause people to increase their intake of sugar from other sources. But we also have no evidence that that isn't happening. And my anecdotal experience with patients is that's just what happens. Now, I have too limited experience with stevia because it's relatively new and it, you know, it doesn't have the footprint in the food supply yet that, that for example, aspartame has. So I, I don't know for sure if the effect is just the same. But yes, in principle, there is a literature indicating that sweet is a self-propagating inclination. In other words, the more you get, the more you want. And the response, the nervous system response, the taste bud response is not exclusive to sugar, it's to sweet. So if it tastes sweet to you, it's triggering that same pathway in your brain. That triggers a reward mechanism. And you know, sugar has been described as addictive. It depends on what you mean by addictive, whether you include every aspect of the definition or not. But it's addictive-like. It's addictive enough. Well, what do we know about addictive stuff? The more you get, the more you need, right? That's called tolerance. It's true of any drug. It's true of sugar too. So yes, I have that concern. So some reliance on stevia as an alternative to sugar and the traditional artificial sweeteners. Yeah, I, I think you're trading up. I really do. And again, monk fruit extract, probably the same. Is it the best way to get there from here? No. Whole foods, real foods, where you're really minimally dependent on any kind of added sweetener, except for those limited occasions when you're having a sweet treat, a dessert, in which case, you know, I, I include real sugar. It's just in such small quantities. Remember, the dose makes the poison. So, you know, if you have a very, very small amount of added sugar in your diet, it's not a problem. So that, that's my approach. And I, you know, I, I, as much as possible, I try to offer advice that's predicated on science, sense, because there are many gaps in the science and we have to fill them with something, global consensus. So I, you know, I try to speak in, in terms where I, I'm on common ground with my colleagues all around the world, and personal practice. I like to practice what I preach, and I always feel... Um, least comfortable if I'm offering advice that's unrelated to what I think is the right thing for me or what I think is the right thing for my family. Um, so this is what I do. So we, we don't use stevia in my household. We use real sugar. We use very, very little of it uh, because we're mostly eating vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds. When we're thirsty, we drink plain water. There's just very little place for added sugar in our diets.